what are even expectations we can leave for the Sun Devils for the rest of the year? That's what we're here to talk about on this edition of the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. You are Locked on Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked on Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team Every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. Thanks as always for tuning in, making us your first listen of the day. And a shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. Wherever you get your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. Stay in touch with that content by following me on Twitter at Richie Brad36 and the podcast as well at L O underscore Sun Devils. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on college or enter promo code locked on college at checkout for a free water bottle with your purchase. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Guys, it's 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 gonna be a dreadful rest of the season. I'm not gonna lie to you. I I am a diehard Sun Devils fan. I like to think that I kind of balance the analytical side with the fan side of this podcast, right? I I love this team to death, and I will go to war for the Sun Devils, and I'll go to war for Kenny Dillingham, and I'll go to war for just about anybody else on this team. Brian Moore, Jaden Rashada, the playmakers on offense and defense. Like, I love this team, but we also have to understand this is not a team that is built to win the rest of the season with the stretch that we have. And we'll get to the record towards the end of the podcast. But right now, we need to talk about setting expectations, both offensively and defensively, before we can get to a record prediction. We're going to go ahead and start with the offensive side of the ball. And Look, there's really just one or two major things to focus on here. We can talk about the offensive line. We could talk about the run game. We could talk about the pass catchers and just about everything else. However, there really is just one thing that we need to bring a lot of focus to. And that is the quarterback play as well as the play calling. I said one thing, but I meant two things. Just ignore me. The quarterback play and the play calling is where our attention should be driven for the remainder of the year. Jaden Rashada is out four to six weeks. Kenny Dillingham said in a press conference at the end of this past Saturday's game against Fresno State that the red shirt is a very real possibility for Jaden. He's played two games this year. He's going to miss half the season in a worst-case scenario. In a best-case scenario, you know, he's only going to miss five games out of 12. I would anticipate that they probably will get him back out. I just don't know if he ends up getting shut down for the year. It really just kind of depends on how the rest of this progresses. But even beyond Jaden, you've got Jacob Conover, Trent Borgay, and Drew Pine. You need to see. You need to see progress with those guys. It does not matter if they show you that they can be not franchise, but like faces of the program for the next however many years. They don't need to be that because that's what you have Rashada for. What you do need them to be is serviceable at a minimum. And what they showed you against Fresno State did not indicate that they can get the job done. It didn't matter who it was under center. Borgay didn't look great when he was out there before his injury. Drew Pine looked dreadful. And that's, you know, putting putting makeup on a pig, honestly, if I'm going to call it that. Jacob Conover looked equally as bad as the rest of the guys. Nobody looked good. And that just can't happen. That, that absolutely can't happen. Even for a team that is rebuilding, you've got to be better than that. You have got to get 
better production from these quarterbacks. At the end of the day, even if these guys still are more interceptions and touchdowns kind of thing, because I don't know that we can expect them to be above average at this point. But even if it's that, you still need to see that these guys are capable of running an offense, that these guys are capable of stepping up in the absence of Jaden Rashada, that these guys are capable of doing just enough to get everything else going. You know, if the run game gets going, like we have seen it is capable of, it takes a lot of stress off of these quarterbacks. If these pass catchers are able to consistently get involved, and it's not to the fault of them, we'll talk about that in just a second, then they're doing just enough. That's what you're looking for out of these guys out of at the quarterback position. It doesn't matter if it's Conover, Pine, Borgay, Richie Bradshaw, whoever else. You just need them to be able to run the offense efficiently. But the best way to do that is with play calling. And right now, their, their play calling on offense has been really bad. Call it as it is. It has been bad. And that's got to change. Kenny Dillingham said in the press conference that he wants to be a little more hands-on and get more involved. Now, whether or not he's going to be the full-time play caller is yet to be seen, but I definitely anticipate that he's going to have his fingerprints on this offense a lot more than what he previously had, because I think that he put a lot of trust in Bo Baldwin and the rest of the guys to be able to get that job done. And they just have it. Kenny Dillingham, on the other hand, is a mastermind offensively. He's gotten a lot of work done wherever he's gone. Florida State helped Jordan Travis to get to where he is. Auburn and Oregon helped to get Bo Nix to where he is. Memphis was able to get a lot out of Brady White and did a lot of learning under Mike Norvell. Like He has done so much growing since he started getting into the coaching atmosphere. And now he's at Arizona State, and you've got a team that could potentially really start to get the ball rolling here. The best way to do that is to allow him to get his hands on it and allow him to start morphing and and shaping this team into his image. This is a very important thing, in my opinion. I, I know there's some people that think that head coaches should stay head coaches, but there's also guys that you just need them to be able to call certain plays or borderline be the play callers. And we're already three games into the Kenny Dillingham era. We're already at a point where we feel that going with Kenny as the full-time play caller is probably the best decision this team can make. I don't know what that says about everyone else, but I think it's the best thing we can do moving forward because the offense has been bland, it's been inconsistent, and it hasn't been able to get going the way that we would like it to. So this is where the changes need to come in. This is where we need to see the growth moving forward. Hopefully that is the case. Remains to be seen. But that's pretty much where I'm sitting at when it comes to the offensive side of the football. There's a lot of work that needs to be done if we're ever going to get to a point where you can feel confident and not consistent. I can't think of the word I'm trying to get to. But there's work that needs to be done is the bottom line here. Whether it's a quarterback quarterback situation or it's the play calling, whatever it is you think needs the most work, both of them at the end of the day need a lot of work done to get to where we need them to be. Guys, I got I got to tell you, I absolutely love my bird dogs. I wear them all the time, and I really encourage you guys to get them as well because they're the ones that are sponsoring this episode today. These bird dogs, they stretch like a khaki short, khaki shorts, and are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and give your leg a truly sculpted look. Even someone like me that is not working out consistently gets good-looking legs with this. They're functional for any occasion, whether it's on the golf course, going on a date or an evening out, going to the pool, the workout, lounging, work. You think about it, and they do it. And with an anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long, you're never going to feel uncomfortable, especially out here in Arizona where you know that it gets hot because they fit better than, better than a regular short that is stiff and often restricting. 
I love my bird dogs, guys. I seriously love them so much. I really encourage you guys to go get yourself a pair as well. And right now, if you go to birddogs.com slash locked on college or enter promo code locked on college to check out, you can get a free bird dogs water bottle with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on college for a free water bottle at checkout or promo code locked on college to check out. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. I got to tell you guys, one of the best parts about Locked On is having the best coverage up until kickoff. And right now, with the season going on, Locked On is kicking up their coverage with Locked On College Football. College Football Kickoff Live. Every Friday, Locked On will go live from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern on every Locked On College YouTube channel. College Football Live. College Football Kickoff Live will kick off playoff implications, conference rivalry games, and go in-depth like only Locked On can, including insights and analytics from our stable of Locked On college hosts covering their team every day. Find Locked On College Football Kickoff Live every Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern on any and all Locked On College YouTube channels. You won't want to miss it. It's the best coverage that you can possibly get for yourself. Back into our conversation now. We're going to flip to the defensive side of the football where I don't know that there's a lot that needs to be done, but it's still a it's still a unit that needs improvement for sure. This is what I think the realistic expectation needs to be. Just continued development. You don't need 50 sacks. You don't need 50 turnovers. You don't need to hold offenses to 10 points or less. You don't need that. Rather, what you need is these guys to show that they're picking up the defense more and that they're going to start snowballing into a very quality team. That's what you're looking for out of these guys right now. And you've seen that so far. This has been a very strong defensive unit, like points aside, because I think that they're probably like mid 20s in like, terms of points allowed per game, probably around that 25 mark, but also realize how many times they've been given short fields. I mean, last week alone, the Sun Devils turned the ball over eight times. But yet, here's the defense stepping up and getting it done when it matters. That's what you're looking for. The way that Brian Ward is coaching up these guys is beyond, what was the word I was going to use? I can't, I'm, I'm just short-minded today, I guess, but what he's doing commendable, it's beyond commendable. That was the word I was looking for. He's doing an outstanding job with these guys. He's coaching these guys up. He's getting guys that a lot of, a lot of people and a lot of fans didn't know going into this year. I guarantee you the casual Sun Devil fan did not know who Prince Dorval was, but yet here, here he is with two and a half sacks through three games, leading the team, being one of the most consistent pass rushers on the team and somebody that you feel can really start to be that building block for the defensive front. Here he is getting Jordan Clark to play the best football of his career and really start to get his ball rolling for potentially getting to that next level. You've got Tate Romney, who the redshirt freshman transfer from BYU has suddenly become one of the leading tacklers on the team, has become one of the one of the key cogs at the linebacker spot for the team. He's getting Trey Brown to continue his strong play from his time at Washington State under Brian Ward to continue. He's getting Shamari Simmons and Chris Edmonds and D Ford to play really good football. Like the culmination of everything that he's been able to accomplish so far, so far more than commendable. He's done a great job. You just want to see that that continues to be the case. And it's also really important to understand the Sun Devils are about to get in a gauntlet of a schedule. I mean, like I said, we're going to talk more in detail about it later on, but this is going to be a very, very difficult stretch for the Sun Devils coming up here. You don't need this, this defense to like I said, hold these teams under 10 points because that's just not going to happen. 
quite frankly, I don't know if your average of like 25 points per game is going to happen because you've got serious high power offenses that are coming here and that you're going to have to play. It's, it's tough. It's really, really tough to see what's going on with this program, but yet here's your defense that's playing their hearts out for 60 minutes. They're playing their hearts out for the entirety of the game. You can't ask for much more out of that than what these guys are doing. Beyond impressive. You're just hoping that this continues to be the case. You want to see that these guys continue to grasp on to Brian Ward's philosophy and move forward as a team and become those guys that can help win you more football games. That moving forward past 2023 can get you back on track to being a very good football team. That's where you're at right now. That's your expectation for the rest of the year is just seeing that these guys are going to continue to make their improvements moving forward. And they're going to continue to be a team that goes out and competes every single week. That's the realistic expectation here. That's what you want to see out of these guys, that they continue to play their hearts out. So far, things are really looking good for that side of the football. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you that peace of mind so that you're not just hoping that you have access to the medication that you need in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure that you have the medication in hand. Jace Medical is simple. They handle everything from online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. So don't get caught unprepared. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical plus an additional $20 off when you use the code locked on at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's Jace, J-A-S-E, medical.com, promo code locked on. One more time, thanks as always for tuning in. Wherever you're getting your podcast hit, like, subscribe, turn on notifications wherever you're getting your content. Let's talk about the rest of the schedule. It's it's brutal, you guys. There are nine games remaining, all Pac-12. Seven of those teams are ranked. And of those seven, you are playing seven in your next eight. There's no break. You have number five, USC, coming to town this weekend. The following Saturday is your first road game at Cal. Cal is very quietly 2-1, and one, by the way. And then you have six consecutive ranked games before you end the year at home versus U of A. I don't know that I could... Think of a tougher schedule that the Sun Devils have had in the last however many years. And for a team that's rebuilding, man, that's tough. That is tough to have to go through that. I I don't know how you're going to go through and win a game, honestly. And that's where we'll pretty much start and end this conversation is, is there a win in sight? If I'm being completely honest, I just don't know that there is. I don't know that there is a win remaining on this schedule. But let's go through it. Home this week versus number five USC. That's a loss. Through and through. That is a loss. You're not winning that game. At Cal. Plausible. Winnable game. But again, they're two and one. They're playing a lot better football than... Anybody would give them credit for. They have they have really played their hearts out in the games that they've been in. I know they were very close against Auburn and very easily could have started the year uh three and out. But they're getting quality play on the offensive side of the football. They're playing very good defensively. I know that Jaden Nott is 
one of the best kept secrets in all of college football at the running back spot. I don't feel good about that game, especially in Berkeley, but hey, it's winnable, I suppose. Back at home versus Colorado, I'm saying this is winnable, very much, quote unquote, and very, very skeptical. The only way that this would be even remotely winnable is if Colorado takes a slump the way that some of us believe that they could. I don't know that they're going to. They're playing really, really well. And Shadur Sanders is legitimately putting up a Heisman campaign. You won't have to play Travis Hunter more than likely because of a very, very dirty hit that he suffered versus Colorado State. But if they were to regress, maybe you have a chance? Probably not. On the road in Seattle against number eight, Washington. Loss. Loss, 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 loss. At home versus number 21, Wazoo. I don't like that game. They have they have played us very well over the last 10 years. They're winning pretty consistently over us. I would take Washington State. Cameron Rising, or not Cam Rising. Uh, Cam Ward has played very good football. Speaking of Cam Rising, at number 11, Utah. Even if Rising isn't back, that's a loss. That is pound for pound, one of, if not the best teams in the Pac-12. That's a loss, especially in Salt Lake. Then you head to Pasadena to play number 22 UCLA. Maybe. Maybe. Because they're definitely on the decline, but they're also playing very good football. Like, that's that's a team that you should not be sleeping on. They're obviously ranked for a reason. Dante Moore is playing like the best freshman in college football right now. That's a loss. More than likely. It may be, but very minimal chance. Home versus Oregon. Number 10, Oregon. It's a loss. Uh, before the season, I predicted that would be a win. Just kind of on the logic of the Sun Devils are going to be better than we think they are. And maybe Kenny Dillingham gets a win versus former employer. It's not happening. And then you end the year at home versus Arizona. That is the only game that I could realistically see you win right now. And the reason why is because of the rivalry factor. Those two teams play each other. You throw the records out the door. It, that is a zero and zero team that are going into that game. That's a winless team and a, a undefeated team that go into that game. That is the only game that I can realistically see you win right now. Simply for those factors. Talent-wise, as much as it kills me to say it, U of A is the more talented team. I just think that from a rivalry standpoint, maybe you have a chance. If we're being honest, no, you don't. This is... More than likely a 1-11 and 11 football team, whether you want to admit it or not, because I know there's going to be people in the comments who call me pessimistic and people who say I'm too hard on this team and people who will rip me a new one. That's fine. Do it. If the Sun Devils win more than two games this year, I would be ecstatic but I really don't think they're going to. And I bleed maroon and gold. I would die for this program. I just don't know that they're going to be able to accomplish that. But again, rip me if it would make you feel better. You can sound off in the comments how many wins do you think we're going to get by the end of the year. I'm saying we get two wins. Hopefully we get more. But that's all I got for you guys on this edition of the podcast. Thanks as always for tuning in. Wherever you get your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. I will see you guys very soon. Spencer McLaughlin will be joining me tomorrow. Till then, you keep it locked right here on Locked On Sun of